Hi everybody and welcome to another piano video here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name is Stu Harrison. Today we got a chance to take a look at the Schimmel C189. This is a six foot two grand piano made in Germany by Schimmel. It's part of their classic series. Uh, I have played one before, but only for about five minutes and it wasn't tuned. This one is in brilliant condition and I was really excited to get to share it with you right here on YouTube. If it's the first time that you are joining us here on the channel, we would love it if you hit that subscribe and notification bell, either now or at any point in the video. If you really like what you're seeing, want to see more, we have hundreds of videos up and always coming out with new ones. We have a blast doing these, so it'd be great to have you along for the ride. Without further ado, let's get right into some playing, some discussion, uh, some analysis of the C1 any Dine right away. Well, it's always a fun day when we actually come across a piano that we haven't really sampled on the channel yet. And today it is the C189, it's part of the classic series from Schimmel, and it's here in this lovely white. Uh, so that's always kind of nice too. More white pianos showing up than, uh, than I'm used to seeing around. White seems to be this, this color that kind of trends in and trends out in 2021. Everybody seems to be uh, interested, or certainly a much larger portion than usual seems to be interested in white pianos. So I've uh, been having more of those show up in the stores, seeing more of them online. And this is a lovely example of a white C189 right here. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, Schimmel is a German manufacturer uh, that, like uh, Zeiler, had an Asian buyer come and essentially uh, dramatically and and uh, in a clinch, improve its financial position, uh, i.e. provide the, the cash infusion and, and a bit of depth uh, so that they could continue operations and restructure. And so uh, that's something that Schimmel's been able to do uh, with their uh, parent company, which is now Pearl River. Uh, Zyler, of course, uh, that happened with uh, Samic uh, in Indonesia. Grotrian uh, has also uh, had that happen with Parsons, which is a a Chinese retailer slash, you know, manufacturing contractor. Uh, so Schimmel is still going strong. Even in 2021, there were a few years there in the uh, 2010s where it looked a little unclear whether they'd be able to continue on, but here they are. And man, the pianos are better than ever. So it's about a six foot two, and this piano is, well, I suppose in every way, classic Schimmel. There's a lot about this sound that I hear on their uprights, a lot about the sound that I hear on some of their smaller and their larger ground. So Schimmel's done a fantastic job of creating uh, a, a thread that carries throughout their entire line. There's obviously specific uh, tonal philosophies that they've been able to integrate into actual design and production that allows them uh, to give this unified experience right across the line. Many manufacturers don't have that. Um, a lot of manufacturers, there will be significant differences in character from one model to another model or from one line to another line. Um, but with Schimmel, it seems to be this very even linear, uh, you know, progression of uh, depth of tone uh, and uh, power and all of that. And, and it's just graded so perfectly from the smallest grands up to the largest grands and, and in their upright. And all along the way, there is this very specific combination of attack uh, and um, cabinet resonance and um, upper mid-range shimmer that these instruments have. It's a beautifully blended sound and it creates uh, this feeling of extreme intimacy uh, inside the tone. Like you really do feel when you're playing a shimmel and particularly the grands that your head is a lot closer to the hammers. Uh, than it actually is. You just feel like you're inside uh, the instrument. And that's a very engaging quality for an instrument to have. Uh, there are other instruments that I have played that give me that, and it certainly is 
uh, exciting to be on those. Uh, Ravenscroft has always really been able to do that. I've played uh, a Siler, German Siler 186 that really seemed to do that for me. Um, I've played a couple of Steinway M's, of course, uh, you know, some of the great concert instruments uh, do that in spades, you know, Hamburg Steinway D uh, or, uh, you know, a C Beckstein 2A2, that kind of thing is just, it's, they're, they're fantastic. But to get that on an instrument in this kind of price range is pretty remarkable and it's just so blended. Uh, so we've got this uh, six foot two instrument and this is different than the K195. Uh, now I should mention that the K195 and the C189, uh, the K being part of Schimmel's concert series, actually have fairly similar scale designs. The major reason for the difference in the length between the 195 and the 189 is actually the length they've added to accommodate the full concert action on the K195. And that's one of the hallmarks of that particular line from Schimmel is the fact that no matter what size you get, you're getting a full concert action all the time. So there's always going to be this spread between the classic and the concert series size-wise that's caused by this. So this action feels like you're playing a six foot grand, but the sound feels like you're playing an instrument that is twice as wide and twice as long. Uh, it's just an intense amount of projection and sustain and blend that you get out of this piano. Let's hear it. There is so much going on in this sound. So it's truly, uh, you know, uh, it feels like you're painting um, with these broad strokes, these really uh, lovely kind of harmonic gestures uh, that it kind of compels you to to want to create. And although this is hard to have the, the microphones pick up, the cabinet resonance on these instruments is pretty exceptional as well. This is an area that Schimmel's spent a lot of time on. Um, they've really focused on scale designs that maximize the surface area of the soundboard, so you're getting tons of tone for the size, but they've also spent a lot of time on um, the beams uh, that are part of the rim system. Uh, so when I'm playing notes like this E flat, The 
whole front of the piano I can feel vibrating like right through your finger. So the rim activation on these instruments is great. And so as a proportion of the total tone, you've got this rim resonance that's really creating some of that blended sound, that shimmer. So that's certainly two aspects that are you know, contributing to that, that unique uh, profile. The other thing is, on both the classic and the concert, uh, there are duplex scaling uh, that's behind the bridge, and on the front here uh, of the classic, I wouldn't call it a true triplex, but it's certainly like a mixed scale. You do have lengths of string that are permitted to ring, um, although they're not tuned like the concert. So, so that can actually create a stronger, more powerful treble when it isn't perfectly tuned. It's kind of like the pipe organ thing where you throw a mixture in there that more is a, a bit of an interference wave and it actually heightens the, the dynamic output of the total wave. Yeah, and the totality of all that together is that when you are playing chords on a shimmel and you're even playing just two or three notes, every one of those combinations winds up being its own singular sonic experience rather than really being able to pick out these individual notes, which can also be a very interesting playing experience. This is just now, you know, you get into preferences now uh, where there is no right or wrong, but for people who truly like feeling um, as close to the piano as if you were on a great upright and love the blend of lush, lush harmonies, um, you know, a Schimmel piano is going to be right at home for you. There's certainly some bass presence there, but it would be, you know, accurately described as a bit of a brighter sound. Not that it's shrill, not that there's any glassiness, but just the attack of the note is just so biased towards kind of some of those upper partials rather than the fundamental. Um, so, you know, like all things, this is just what your ear likes. I'm going to go through the whole piano kind of from bottom uh, to top and give you a bit of a more specific uh, blow by blow um, of all of the different ranges. So on the 189, you've got a lot more cabinet resonance, um, cabinet activation happening um, for a piano of this size and in that range than most other instruments would give. In fact, I would say the bass is almost a little outsized um, versus the other ranges. In terms of its power. There's a really uh, unexpected Kind of a delightful little unexpected surprise as you're going down through the bass. There's a brassy section right almost like a Busendorfer type brassy uh, bass tone. And then as you get into the bottom fifth, the tone kind of opens up into this more warmer mid range, uh, like a bell like sound.
You'll know from my past videos, I am a real stickler for instruments that r nail the transition uh, from your treble bridge, bridge to your bass bridge and your, your, your tri-chords down into your bi-chords. This does it beautifully. One of the ways you can do that well is feathering where the transition from the steel to the copper occurs and where that happens on your treble bridge versus your, versus your bass bridge. So you kind of, um, if all of those things kind of feather at different points, then you wind up um, having a nice transition that isn't too obvious. Uh, the hardest to do is where you have your steel strings transition to your copper strings at exactly the same time as the, your scale design switches from your treble bridge to your bass bridge and you have huge differences in character that you're suddenly trying to make up through voicing and other you know kind of odd uh, uh, compensating effects it never really works very well. So the break here is, is tremendously uh, smooth. The melodic range as well as the tenor range here Again, tons of cabinet activation. And beautiful sustain. To get up into that top section, it's a less colorful treble than you get out of a piano such as a Shigeru. You know, this treble really reminds me of like a, a, like a perfect Steinway A. Lots of strength. Not quite as clear and not quite as colorful as say a concert level Beckstein or the Shigeru, I already mentioned that. But that gorgeous shimmer that Schimmel uh, just executes on so well. That's kind of a description of what you get from the bottom to the top of the range. The action on shimmels is something else that's worth noting because they have got this, they call it sort of a mineralized or a mineral content in the top of the key. Uh, it really is a, a, a unique texture that they put on uh, the white keys as well as on the black keys, but I notice it more on the white keys. The uniqueness comes more on in the white keys. And it's definitely got a, a different type of glide to it than you're used to from all of your stands. It doesn't feel like a Steinway, it doesn't feel like a Yamaha, a Kawai, Eckstein, any of those. The bottom of the key bed is also a little harder than what you sometimes are used to. Um, that can be a, a nice thing. It almost, to me, compares to like playing a Roland digital versus say a, a Kawai digital where there's a little more depth to it. So um, you feel like you reach your top dynamic range a little quicker 
so that would be, you know, one thing on a shimmel uh, that that I would describe as a bit different is you, you know, there's a huge dynamic output, but there's uh, less range in terms of your own input to get that dynamic output. So uh, controlling these instruments is going to take a little bit of practice uh, to get used to. But at the same time, it's an effortless piano to play by the same, by the same reasons. other unique things about the 189, and this is consistent across the whole line, they do the shape of their pedals a bit differently. They tend to be a little shorter and a little fatter, and the, um, uh, I guess the resistance, particularly you notice it on the sustain pedal, it takes a little more force to get the sustain pedal happening on a shimmel than on other grands. I wouldn't recommend trying to adjust that, it's just something to get used to. Uh, you notice it again, uh, certainly on the Sostenuto. The left pedal sort of feels about the same, but there's less depth to the pedal. The pedal's shorter, and by both, you know, I guess on because of both factors, you just wind up with the sense that it is taking more pressure because there's just less torque available, or you need to apply more pressure because yeah, there's less length to the lever and there's less depth to the lever. Hope you've enjoyed this little walkthrough of the C189 Schimmel. We are going to do a playing sample where all I do uh, in a separate video is just sit down and do a few minutes of playing on this instrument with no talking, uh, give you uh, really a, a, the best sense of its sound as we possibly can. We've recorded today's video with two large diaphragm condensers. Uh, they are placed about a foot above the instrument. It's in a somewhat ambient room, so we've tried to mic this a little closer so that we are getting the right balance of direct tone versus uh, reflected tone. Uh, but other than that, we haven't done anything to the sound. No compression, no EQ. I'm trying to give you as uh, best representation or an, as most accurate a representation at home as we possibly can. If it is the first time that you've seen us here on YouTube, then we would love it if you subscribed and become part of our community uh, because there's all kinds of great, cool people all around the world with all sorts of different backgrounds too. We've got pianists, we've got uh, you know hobbyist uh, piano players, we've got recording engineers, we've got people who have absolutely nothing to do with the music industry at all but just really love the space and, and, and love the topics. Uh, so dive in, make some new friends, make some comments. We try and uh, you know respond to as many of those as we possibly can. And we do usually get a chance to read literally all of them. Uh, so that would be great, mean a lot to us, and hopefully uh, add a little entertainment and value to your life as well. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Marion Pianos on YouTube, and we will see you again soon. <laughs>